Nothing in this podcast or on our website should be construed as medical advice. Consult your healthcare provider for your individual nutritional and medical needs. The information presented is based on our research and is strictly that of the author and not necessarily those of any professional group or other individual. Hi, I'm Sue Becker from Bread Beckers. Welcome to Sue's Healthy Minutes. I'm so excited you've joined me today, and I hope this episode encourages you and allows you to find the answers you have been praying for, for the health of you and your family. Hi, this is Sue. Before I play today's episode of Sue's Healthy Minutes, I wanted to share a message with you. In today's episode, you are going to hear an amazing It's the Bread testimony. It's a wart story, but not like any I have ever heard. The baby with warts in this story is a nursing baby, too young to eat the bread for himself. But mom ate the bread, and the nutrients in the bread were transferred through the mother's milk to nourish this precious child. Because of the subtlety and sharing, I wanted to make sure you did not miss this incredible part of this story. I almost did. And now for the rest of the story. Enjoy. Today on Sue's Healthy Minutes, it is time for another incredible It's the Bread story. But today it is more than a simple testimony or another wart story. It's a life story, a journey about getting a little lost along the way, but the Lord always, ever so gently, drawing us back on track. My guest today is Krista Gogan. I connected with Krista by simply answering a question she had through email. It was rather lengthy email, and I thought about simply reading it on on my podcast today, but I felt sure there was a little more to what she wrote to me and that it would be best to hear it directly from her. So without further ado, I want to introduce my special guest today on Sue's Healthy Minutes, Krista Gogan. Krista, thank you so much for joining me today. Yours is such an amazing journey. Why don't you begin by telling just a little bit about yourself and where you're from? Okay. Thank you, Sue. Thanks for having me today. Um, My name is Krista, as you said, and um, I live in Spanish Fort, Alabama. That's right on the Mobile Bay. Um, I am married and we have four children, um, one granddaughter and a grandson that is due this June. Um, I recently retired from healthcare. I was a nurse practitioner and a nurse before that, total 22 years in the healthcare industry. Um, I retired in December. So I'm just beginning that journey of retirement and trying to navigate those waters. That's that's an exciting time, though, I'm sure. So in your email, you said you first heard about Bread Beckers way back in 2006. What led you to Bread Beckers back then? You know, that's really funny. I I have said this story to so many different people, and most of them look at me like I'm crazy, including the pediatricians that I have gone to. But when I had uh, my second child in 2005, and shortly after that, he had these little bumps all over his body that the doctor had named as molluscum contagiosum, and they were um, not anything they could do about it. There was no treatment. There was no lotion, no pill. So um, I started researching online, and I have no idea how I came across. At the time, I thought it was called Real Bread Company. You may have. That was our bakery. Um, okay. Yeah. So maybe, okay. You, maybe you stumbled <laughs> on the bakery and then stumbled I, off that through yeah. that. Because I, I, didn't, I didn't mill back then. I just bought bread from somewhere. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. And it was delivered. And that is what I would eat. And I would nurse him. He was still breastfeeding at the time. And um, within a week, they were completely gone. It was amazing. And we had struggled with it for, you know, a good solid seven or eight months. Wow. And that molluscum contagiosum, that's a virus. Yeah. The virus that causes the war. Yeah. And, and the doctor there, told you exactly what they told me. It'll run its course and they'll, there's no treatment. They'll go right. away. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could burn them off, but that's really painful. And it's just, it'll run its course. So your kids had that too, I guess. Then. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
So I think it's pretty common, but they're very irritating and they can leave scars if the kids kind of get at them a lot and pick at them. And I have no idea how I stumbled across the website at that time, but I did. I bought the bread. It worked. We used it for probably a good two, two years. Um, then I had my third child in 2007 and I had recently moved here to the Spanish Fort area and she did not, um, have those and neither did my fourth child. So I just stopped buying the bread, kind of forgot about it, had really, um, was eating a lot of the processed bread that she buy in the, in the grocery store. Didn't have any issues that we knew of. And then a few months ago, my son brought my granddaughter over and she had those bumps on her and they were really bad, worse than my son had. And I immediately remembered the bread that I had fed Baxley. And so I um, got online and started looking and I found Sue Breadbecker. So I, <laughs> I'm still at it. <laughs> I still at it. I was so excited. I really didn't know what I would find. And to my knowledge, you don't make the bread anymore because that was not an option. Right. It was purchasing what we need to make the bread. So I sat down one day. And I listened to your entire three and a half hour lecture. It was in like a, a faux kitchen with um, a, an audience that you actually had there. Yeah. And you spoke about all the health benefits. I really didn't know what I was buying back in 2006. I just knew that, oh, it will help with the wart. Let's just do it. That's um, that, Yeah. But when I listened to your, your podcast, it was so well, it was very medical, very detailed, and I was impressed by it. Um, of course, you, everyone knows somebody with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, um, constipation issues, getting gallbladders removed for one reason or another, um, and the complications that can come from that. And everything in your presentation made such scientific sense. And I think if you pulled out any of those pieces of information physicians would agree with that when you put it as a whole and talk about you know eliminating this and just adding this it can help all of that for some reason everyone gets a little nervous like maybe it's a little too wonky for for their liking but um <laughs> but it makes perfect sense and what harm can possibly be done so i immediately purchased my mill and i got three different types of wheat and the people in your store or online help walk you through that process on what to buy, what you need to buy. I got the cookbooks, both of them. It came in the mail two days before I was leaving to go to Greece with my my son for his senior trip. So I milled for two straight days instead of packing because I'm not great at procrastinating. Um, <laughs> when I got to Greece and it only had it in her system, my granddaughter's system for about four days. And my son said they were completely gone. So it in was four days in four days, completely gone. And, um, I saw her Sunday at church and I was feeling on the backs of her little knees or they, those bumps were really, really, really bad and just nothing there, just the smooth baby skin as you can imagine. So, um, I was thrilled with that. I, um, also milled for my mom and my dad. I baked them some bread the first time, and then after that, I, I just kind of give them their own flour. But my mom, I didn't even know this about her, but she has never in her life had a normal bowel movement. She's heard people talk about it, um, and she really didn't know what they were talking about um, as far as, you know, she says, the doctor always told me, when you sit down and you use the restroom, you should just be able to just smoothly go. And she said, I she only goes like every four days, but it's just, um, it's not, they're not normal movements. And so... Um, within a day of eating this, the very next morning, she said it was exactly as she has heard from other people that it should be. And so she eats it every single day and it has done wonders for her. And that's kind of my story too. I mean, I never really, I had struggled with constipation all my life. I bought the meal, made bread, ate the bread one night. And the next morning it was like, different <laughs> it was normal it was the way it is supposed to be so that's amazing that's amazing it really was yeah I can't wait to get my um husband's he has high cholesterol and high blood pressure and uh, pre-diabetic I cannot wait to get his blood results back you know in six months of doing this side note though I, I will say at the end of the day it is calories in calories out so when I'm baking I think they have a tendency in the beginning to eat in excess because it's so yummy <laughs> that I'm like I can't seem to get enough baked 
to freeze to like you know store up so that I'm not baking every single day. Yeah. But I, that, once the newness wears off, I think that you know maybe maybe that will that will be easier. I think it levels off, especially if you're really satisfied nutritionally. Um, yes. Yeah. So, and you mentioned your dad too. So your husband has high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and pre-diabetic. And so you're hoping the bread's going to help him. And then your dad, you mentioned him. Yes, he has the same. He has high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and um, he is also pre-diabetic. Although his last blood work um, um, showed his A1C had improved, but that was not really with the bread yet. So I, I, can, I can, he just started eating a little bit better. Yeah. So with this introduction and to his diet, I do expect to see some some results so just kind of doing my own little study just to kind of see what happens i mean it's exciting kind of makes you want to shout it to everybody but wow well (laughs) we have to have you back on for an update on your dad and your husband for sure oh wow (laughs) but you said so you said you watched the staff of live video and you said in your email that you listened to all 100 plus episodes of six healthy minutes that's a lot of listening well it's it's a lot of walking (laughs) <laughs> okay. All right. So you do it when you're moving. That's amazing about your granddaughter. So you milled the flour and made the bread before you left to leave with yes. your granddaughter? Sure did. Yeah. I, you know, spiced it all up into little pieces for her and left it with her parents and they fed it to her every day. And she calls it Mimi's bread. Oh. And she loves it. And she's a very, very picky eater. I, you can barely get the child to eat. So I do love the fact that if she's just eating grains, at least she's eating these grains because they're loaded with vitamins and good minerals and even protein so I hear you say (laughs) yeah absolutely so many people don't think about that how old is your granddaughter she's three okay all right that's a that's about the same age my oldest daughter when she started getting warts it was right around three years old the second one got them right around three years old and the third one got around three years old I don't I don't know what the three-year-old thing is but that is amazing and to me it's a virus, and if this bread can give you the nutrients that your body needs to fight a virus that quickly, that's pretty amazing. It is. It, it makes you wonder if you're getting the virus based on something lacking yeah, in your body. Yes. So you're retired from nursing. Tell us a little bit about that. That's new. As I said, I just retired in December. I still have my license. It's still active. Um if a friend of mine is out of her clinic for a couple of days, I will fill in for her. But I have no desire to go back and work in the clinic that I had uh, retired from um, where I'm seeing patients every day. So this is just a couple of times, maybe two or three times in a year that I would work. Um, so I'm not sure how long I'll keep that up. But um Right when I retired, I actually got sick. And then after I got feeling better from that, I went to Greece for our senior trip. So I really haven't experienced what retirement life might be like, but I'm not even sure what that's supposed to look like. Or maybe that this is it, just doing all these things that I wanted that I want to do and never have had the time to do before. Um my husband asked me the other day, he said, did you think you'd be making bread in retirement? And I, I <laughs> chuckle at that because I did not. Um, I did not think that I would be milling my own wheat into flour, but I actually giggle every single time that I put those grains in that mill and it comes out flour. It makes me so happy. <laughs> it, it does. There's just something <laughs> joyful about it of just knowing that you're getting the absolute best and you're making the absolute best for your family. In your email, you mentioned my article, Do Not Eat the Bread. It's in my it's in my little red cookbook that's been in there since the very beginning of, of producing that. And um, you made the comment, you said, we got busy and we took our eyes off home. And I thought that was so powerful. Oh, yeah, you're right. I mean, you do get busy. I think that's Satan's biggest tool he can use on us. Um, my sister always says busy is an acronym for being under Satan's yoke. B-U-S-Y, um, to the point where I almost can't say the word busy because I feel I feel guilty about it. But you you are doing good things, um, but sometimes you're just not where you need to be. Um, perhaps it, you're not idle, you're not sitting around all day, but you're not doing what needs to be done. And so you can feel like you're being productive, but you can also be so stressed out and just so ragged at the end of the day, you just can't even see straight and I just I see that from a lot of the other friends uh, moms that I I know and 
take part in their their lives that they don't feel they have time to do anything um, other than just whatever is super quick and easy because we're so busy running around whether it's working or working and taking kids to sports and um, lunches and dinners and um, life gets yeah. definitely in the way. Life, yeah. um, so that your article definitely um, made me feel like if all I get out of retirement, at least in the next few years, is just to slow down mm-hmm. and to try to make um, as healthy and as happy choices as possible for the betterment, not only of the kids, but for my husband and I as well, then that will be a blessing in and of itself. That maybe retirement and the definition of what retirement is doesn't have to be figured out in the first month or the first year. And that it possibly will change as my lifestyle changes right now I still have kids at home so my retirement right now might just be them and making sure that I'm here for them with whatever it is that they need that's powerful and and for those of you listening if you do not have our bread beckers little red spiral bound recipe collection to read the article you can find it on our bread beckers website but also in episode 35 of Sue's healthy minutes I share the word the Lord gave me when we first started Fred Becker's years ago, taken from Proverbs 31, 27, and, and that's what we're referring to. I also have a full nutritional audio recording on Bread Becker's YouTube channel called Do Not Eat the Bread of Idleness. Um, but I'll share briefly just a little bit so you know what we're talking about. Um, but it's definitely worth a listen or reading the article. But Proverbs 31, 27 says this, she looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. And like you, Krista, went for years, when I read this verse, I would sort of ignore it, thinking, I am certainly not idle. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> busy. I have nine children. Um, I raised nine children. I now have my 17th grandchild on the way. But, yeah. you know, through the years of being a young mom, the homeschooling and all the household, church, sports, and kids' activities, I was busy. So I would kind of laugh at that verse and go, huh, that's not me. But one day the Lord just put it on my heart to take a closer look. And so when I did, I studied the words. The words look well, come from a Hebrew word meaning to lean forward and to peer into the distance. Ways, so she looks well to the ways means walks or steps. And household means just that, our homes and family. So what God showed me here is this wise woman peers ahead into the distance to consider the future blessing, but more importantly, maybe the future consequences of today's activities of her family. And she doesn't eat this bread of idleness. The word idle in this verse means having no significant use or value. And the root word this is what I love, means to burn or shine, which I thought was interesting, but in the sense of only apparent, <laughs> looking mm-hmm. real busy, but also this is what hit me, burned out. Bread applies to the food or the grain for making it. So how many, just like what you were saying, how many of us are busy with activities that have no significant use or value, may even be detrimental to our health, and find ourselves burned out. This is the bread of idleness. It's not about not being busy. It's about being busy with things that burn us out and keep us from the important things in our life that can bring help and blessing to our families. So this is not about laying a guilt trip on anyone, but it's just to encourage you, like I have to do often, evaluate my activities to let go of the ones that burn me out and hang on to the ones that God would have me do. And that's what it sounds like you had to do. These activities will not only bless others, but ourselves as well. I love the way you ended your email. You said, I am grateful again. My journey with you started 19 years ago, and I am happy to say we are back with you again, this time for good. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) (laughs) once you realize the importance of it it's hard to let it go it's hard to let it go definitely yeah krista thank you i i was like i said more than a wart story more than a no more constipation story and i look forward to hearing from you about your husband and your dad and we'll have you back on to share that but 
I just loved your whole journey and, and just how you said, you know, I came back and I let busyness and life get in the way. So thank yes. you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. I'm sure you are, but it's been such a joy to hear your story. Before we go, I always ask my guests, are there any final words of encouragement that you would like to share with our listeners? Just one final thing you would like to leave them with. I think so. For anyone listening that thinks you have to retire to actually start this journey, um, there's a very quick and small learning curve to it. And it is so quick and easy to mill your own wheat that it doesn't require a whole stay-at-home mom scenario to make that happen. Right. Yes. I think that's so good. So important to share that. It is so easy with the right tools, a grain mill, bread machine if you need it, a mixer Mm -hmm. to have a larger family, whatever gets it done. But there's always a way to make pancakes and muffins and the quick bread (laughs) stir up so easily. And, and, you know, one other thing you said you loved, your granddaughter was a picky eater, but she loves the bread. She loves Mimi's bread. Absolutely. (laughs) Bread. I love it. Mimi's bread. And that was what was one of the things that was one thing that was so exciting to me is this was healthy food my whole family would love even my picky eaters so that is great well thank you again Krista for um, joining me today and to all my listeners I hope you have been encouraged to stay the course and if you haven't jumped on the journey come on we're here for you we'll help you get started so thank you everyone for listening Krista thank you again for sharing And until next time, this is Sue Becker from Bread Beckers with Sue's Healthy Minutes. Sue's Healthy Minutes podcast has been a presentation by the Bread Beckers Incorporated located in Woodstock, Georgia. For more information, store hours, and learning opportunities, visit breadbeckers.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. Share this with two friends who would benefit from this information and be sure to join us again next week for more of Sue's Healthy Minutes.